If you're visiting Playa del Carmen on the Riviera Maya, you might be faced with a host of touristy food options. But if you're willing to venture off the beaten path a little bit, you'll discover a few hidden gems of the culinary world. Tucked away on the grounds of one of those big, all-inclusive resorts far away from any city is this restaurant that's called Le Chic, where renowned chef Jonathan Gomez has recreated iconic flavors from all over Mexico in amazing and creative ways. Now, last time I visited, he prepared for me a tasting menu with five perfect bites of seafood. The first course was an oyster garnished with chile, avocado, tomato, and then a sprinkling of the liquid that came off of marinating ceviche. And on top of that, Jonathan rested a gelled disc of that same ceviche liquid. Up next was a dish of steamed mussels. These were dressed with a black sauce made from darkly roasted onion and burnt habanero, and then topped with salicornia, which is a type of sea vegetable. The third dish started with a puree of sour orange and then beautiful slices of chocolate clam were layered into the shell, then topped with bits of sausage, spicy pickled onion, tiny cilantro leaves, and a dusting of shkatik chili powder. For my fourth course, Jonathan did his own take on fish a la veracruzana. It started with a diced mixture of tomatoes, capers, and olives. Those are the veracruzana flavors. And then on with sea urchin. That's his own personal twist on this iconic fish dish. And to top it all off, he added finely shredded onions and wild cilantro leaves. The final dish, scallop, started with a squeeze of guacamole pureed with seaweed. Then on went a cube of fresh scallop. And next, a squid ink sauce was spread on top, along with a cloud of burnt sour lime. To finish, Jonathan sprinkled the dish with a little powdered seaweed and the aromatic zest of blackened lima. Five incredibly delicious seafood bites. But to me, the presentation was one of the most memorable parts of the experience. Now, after this one-of-a-kind seafood tasting, I got the opportunity to sit down with Chef Jonathan to talk about his philosophy for capturing true Mexican flavors at La Chique. That thing where you pour the the liquid yeah. into and it's what what was that? Well, one time I'm being in Ensenada, and you remember the you know the fog and you smell it. You know, it's, wow, this is the real ocean breeze. And I say, well, we need put this in the table. We make a very concentrated uh, water with uh, seaweeds from different parts of Mexico, and we put liquid nitrogen and uh, CO2. Like uh, dry ice or something? Something like that, yeah. Like it's that. 135 okay. below zero. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, uh, and when you put this warm, very hot tea made with seaweeds, when it you bubbles up, becomes the fog over the whole table, and it smelled so much like you're at the seashore. So every bite that you take, you get a little of that aroma of the seashore. That was amazing. Thank you, Chef. What, what inspires you? The idea was make a very, very elegant, very, very modern restaurant, but don't forget that my roots. When you have a mole, it's a real mole. When you have a Savera Cruzana, it's the real Vera Cruzana. You know, it's like a, wow, it's beautiful. Wow, and that's delicious. Uh, I think this is the best. You know? I had exactly the reaction that you just described. Every dish that was served to me, I looked at it and I was like, wow, that is so beautiful. And I would taste it and I'd go, wow, is that delicious. And looking down your menu, I felt like I was getting this master class in classic, classic ingredients and preparations. And you know, I think Mexican food is so, it's huge. And I think this is the magic of the Mexican cuisine. You know, you have too much ingredients, too much techniques, too much uh, regions. It's difficult because we need, you know, wake up very early and order to Ensenada all the clams and the fish. And why there? Because it's the best ocean in Mexico. Why the chilies in Oaxaca? Because they are beautiful and unique. So you've taken all of the grandmother's cooking from all over Mexico and you've presented it in these distilled, beautiful and very modern 
bites. Congratulations for that because you haven't lost anything in the translation. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Appreciate it. I think it is really remarkable that a chef as talented as Jonathan Gomez at all that modernist cuisine technique cites the source of his inspiration as the traditional cooking of Mexico. The cool thing is, no matter where you go in Mexico, you don't have to really look very far and you can find somebody making that incredibly delicious food. I've reached out to my chef friends and I said to them, you know, you guys live here in the playa and you don't eat that touristy food. Where do you guys like to go to eat? And you know, kind of strangely enough, they're all located underneath that highway that crosses town. Another kind of interesting thing about these little places, besides their location underneath the highway, is that they're all morning places. These humble little spots with great food are where people go for breakfast, but it's super savory breakfast because in Mexico, that's what people like to eat. Señor, buenos días. Este me gustaría una torta de cochinita y un taco de pavo en relleno negro. Muchas gracias. Talk about really traditional Yucatan flavors. I've got a torta, a sandwich that's made with cochinita pibil. Now that's that pork that is marinated in achiote, wrapped in banana leaves, and then cooked super slowly until it's really tender and really juicy. But the really interesting thing on this plate is the taco here. So it's called pavo in relleno negro, and it is made with turkey that has been marinated in that black seasoning paste that you can find in the markets here. It's made from burnt chilies called recado negro. It's filled with a pork stuffing that's also got that same black paste in it. And then after cooking it really slowly until it's really tender, they pull all the meat apart, make tacos out of it, and garnish it with hard-boiled egg. And I'm ready to dig in. Stop two is for carnitas, and this place is even called carnitas, but not spelled with a C like it's typical, but with a K. Now carnitas are really big chunks of pork, like you can see back there that are cooked in their own fat until they're completely tender and beautifully golden. And what I love about this place is that their delicious carnitas are served with fresh made corn tortillas. And then there's a whole host of salsas that you can put on top of them. This place is so good. Now when I go to a taqueria that specializes in carnitas, I don't order the maciza or the firm lean meat. I always order the surtido because that's gonna get a little bit of the fatty meat mixed in with the lean meat. And then how you dress your carnitas taco, well, of course, it's up to you how you're gonna do that. But I'll show you my perfect version of it. And it starts with guacamole next to the pork. This is a special spicy guacamole that is made with habanero chili. Then I'm gonna add the crunch of onions and cilantro over the top of that. Another reason I love this place, because they serve chicharron, crunchy fried pork skin, and then you crunch that all up and put it over the top of that taco, beautiful. And a squeeze of lime. Now that is the perfect mouthful.
This is one of the most popular places in town. And it's a kind of taqueria that specializes in cecina from Yeka Pixla. Now, cecina is very thinly sliced beef, and it's done in this crazy accordion cut, so you can stretch these pieces of beef out for what seems like miles. It's salted, and then it's cooked on a griddle and served with grilled onions and grilled nopales. And, well, I've got an idea to order this taco that's kind of over the top. So my over-the-top taco starts with the cecina that they're so famous for. And then they put longanisa, which is a pork sausage, a little crumbled chicharron, of course, the onions and the grilled nopal cactus, a slice of cheese, and then they top it off with a warm salsa that is spiked with arbol chili. And then you come over here, and there's a choice of three different salsas, limes, radishes, cucumbers, onions, cilantro. But does this need any of that? I don't think so. Well, maybe just a little squeeze of lime. Now, this is going to be quite the feat just to get this incredible taco to my mouth, but I'm up for it. Okay, so I've had pork cochinita, and then I had pork carnitas, and then cecina, which is beef, but I had some sausage on the top of it, and a little crumbled chicharron as well, so I need something a little bit lighter. That's why I've come to Un Taco Mas, and well, this is a style of place that you can find a lot in central Mexico where they make tacos de guisados, or the stewed fillings for tacos. And in these places, you can find a lot of vegetarian food, which I think I could utilize right now. I'm ordering a roasted poblano and sweet corn taco with crema. Another one with calabacitas, those little Mexican zucchini. And one with scrambled eggs and chaya. It's a sort of spinach-like green that's used so much in this area. Each of those tacos gets topped with a spoonful of rice. This is just homey food. It's not expensive at all. There's a huge salsa bar over there. Well, salsas and other add-ons and toppings. Onto the one with the chai and scrambled eggs, I put a little bit of avocado salsa. With the calabacitas or the Mexican zucchini, I did pico de gallo or what's called schnipek here in the Yucatan. This is just simple, soul-satisfying food. Seems like everybody's got taco fever these days. So I'm gonna show you how to put together a series of taco fillings that I think go together really well when you wanna have people over for tacos. And we're gonna start with carnitas. Okay, so when you go to those places in Mexico or even in the United States that specialize in carnitas, they always have the huge cauldrons of pork fat and they cut up the whole animal and put it in there and simmer it until it's completely tender and beautifully golden. It's just not achievable easily at anyone's home. So instead of going all the way though to a braised dish, which is what most people do and call it carnitas, I'm gonna show you how you can actually cook the pork in the pork fat utilizing the slow cooker. It actually works really beautifully. You start with a pork shoulder roast. I buy a couple of pounds of pork shoulder roast and then cut it into large pieces. If you make them really small, they'll cook too quickly. And then transfer them to the slow cooker. They should basically cover the whole bottom of the slow cooker, but with some gaps in between the meat. Now on to the pork lard. I always recommend that you go to a butcher that renders his own or buy it from a Mexican grocery store. They often sell the good stuff back by the meat department. Don't get the commercial stuff. It's got additives to it. Melt it. I do that in a microwave. Pour it over the pork and the two cups should be just enough to basically cover that pork. Now, the next thing is to sprinkle it all with salt and then put the lid on the slow cooker. Put it on high and cook it for three hours. 
there is nothing like the texture of pork that has been slowly cooked in its own fat. Now, it won't be brown at that point. We're gonna brown the meat just before we serve it. Well, I'm lucky this afternoon because Lainey has volunteered to help me put together these taco fillings. And we're gonna start with a charred summer squash filling, all vegetarian. And when I say charred, um, it's a little different than grilled vegetables. Usually when you're grilling vegetables, you put some oil on it and then cook them until they're beautifully golden. Well, these don't have any oil at all. They're just cooked on the grill dry until they get these beautiful little charred marks it's on really it. It's really rustic. And delicious. <laughs> I think it is. And then we're going to season that with the hot banana pepper, what's called shkatik in the Yucatan or guero chili. And then I'm going to make a roasted garlic mojo de ajo to top it all off. Right, let's get started. <laughs> First thing is to roast the peppers. So I've got the grill on here and I've got it actually really hot because I want to blister the skins evenly all over. Just spread them all out like that. You can hear them start to blister right away and just keep turning them until they're evenly blackened all over. While those are blackening and blistering, let's cut up the summer squash. I have two different kinds here, actually. This is the one that I like the most. It's called tatume. This is the one that they use extensively in Mexico, and it's got a beautifully sweet flavor to it. The other one is the typical yellow squash. So I'm gonna square up the squash and then cut it into little cubes. Same goes with the yellow squash. I'm gonna slide these all onto this perforated grill pan. I just love this piece of equipment because it allows me to maneuver a lot of small pieces onto the grill and off really easily. So scoop all this stuff up and lay them out on the perforated grill pan. I'm going to slide this back over here and give them a nice coating of salt. I think I've got a nice even coating on there. So I'm going to slide these onto the grill. It looks like the chilies are just about ready. Now is the time to peel these chilies. I've charred them now so that the skin is very easy to pull off of here. Now these are fairly thin skinned chilies. I don't mind if the little bit of that charred skin stays on. And next it's to cut the top of each one off and then cut a slit down the roasted chili, open it up and then scrape the seeds out. I'm gonna get rid of all of the little bits and pieces here from the cleaning of the chilies. Rinse off my hands. And then it's time now to cut up the chilies into thin strips. So the garlic is all roasted and ready to go. It seems like that we're in the right amount of timing here. <laughs> I'm gonna scoop this into a bowl and we'll come back to it, but I've got to get back over there to our summer squash that's grilling away. Great. So I'm gonna make our roasted garlic mojo de ajo dressing. I'm gonna start by putting in the roasted garlic into the food processor. Now I'm gonna put the top on, start the food processor, and then stream in some olive oil. Now that all the olive oil is in there, I'm just gonna need a quarter cup of lime juice. Into the food processor. Now we're gonna add about a half a teaspoon of salt, then turn on the food processor to blend it all together. Mmm, smells delicious. We're also going to make some grilled catfish 
tacos with a spicy, creamy salsa to go with the other tacos that we're serving tonight. The first thing that I'm gonna do is to marinate it, and it's a very simple marinade because we're gonna call these black pepper grilled catfish tacos. And I'm gonna use some black pepper, salt, and olive oil. The first thing is to drizzle on some olive oil. Next goes a nice sprinkling of salt. And lastly, the black pepper. What I'm using is a combination of black pepper with a little bit of white pepper and pink peppercorns, which will give it a very beautiful aroma. Okay, I think that may be enough. Sprinkle that black pepper mixture on the Ooh, top of it. that looks good. Ooh, and that smells good. <laughs> Grill roasted habaneros. <laughs> okay, let's face it. Most of us end up with too many habaneros. Maybe you got a plant and all the habaneros come ripe at the same time. Or you got a neighbor that's got a plant or you go to the farmer's market and you get a basket of them. So what we're gonna do today is to show you what I call a roasted habanero pickle that you can keep in your refrigerator and just use little bits of from time to time. So it starts with these grill roasted habaneros and roasted garlic. So now that we've got that in there, we're just gonna top it off with some vinegar and salt. Now it's the vinegar and the salt that will keep this preserved. I like to flatten it out on top and pour a little bit of olive oil on there just to keep it completely sealed. It'll last for a couple of months. Now we're just gonna process it all together. Now I'm gonna put these down here in this little refrigerator. And then I'm gonna head inside and make some guacamole and a salsa to go with the carnitas. I'm gonna make a little bit of the habanero mayonnaise to go on top of those catfish tacos. So I'm gonna start just by putting a little bit of mayonnaise into this bowl. Now on top of that mayonnaise is gonna go a little bit of lime zest. And now for our habanero pickle. Now, this stuff is really potent, so you've gotta be careful with it. Just a little bit for a touch of spice in our salsa. Now, to balance out the spice, we're just gonna add a little bit of agave nectar for sweetness. Give this a nice little stir. Now we've got a delicious zesty mayonnaise for when we're ready to serve our catfish tacos. The catfish was grilled. The tender pork was seared until golden in a pan. The guacamole got garnished with cilantro. And the roasted squash was mixed with mojo and the roasted chilies. So we've got all different kinds of fixings for tacos here. This is some grilled catfish over there. We covered it with a bunch of black pepper. But what's really spicy is the habanero mayo, right? How much habanero did you put in it? I'm going to keep that to myself. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is Just some pork carnitas. And this is charred summer squash with roasted garlic mojo. It's got some good stuff. Anyway, dig in. Please help okay. yourself yeah. some plates yeah, and stuff. Plate. So. What did you say this was three chilies? No, three, three different chilies. dried chilies with okay. roasted tomatillo and garlic. You know what? I think this is like the turning point in my life where my eyes have been like <laughs> open to the, the world now? of like right. spice. Like, Either that or you're crying. I see like little jalapeno <laughs> angels floating in the skies right now. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Okay, so I fired up your appetite. Some of my favorite dishes, entertaining tips, and Mexican travel inspirations. Well, now I want to hear what you have to say. Visit us at rickbayless.com slash TV for recipes and a whole lot more.